Hello, it's 8.30. Welcome to the weather update. July 7th, 2021. A sultry, sultry day. Definitely felt a lot worse than yesterday. And uh, the sky was so full of haze. It was just disgusting. Um, and then a lot of this is due to the heat, uh, the ground haze, the ground level ozone, uh, and pollution as well as the smoke. So we had the, the combination of that, throw that in with the humidity. And uh, this is what the sun looked like this evening. Uh, quite, you could see the trees, uh, the sky just had a funny look to it. Uh, and uh, there you go again. Uh, the sun there, just extremely, just hazy, uh, hazy, very hazy uh, sun there. Um, you'll see there. So let me uh, make that a little, get a chance to see that a little more there. But uh, very hazy. There you go. Uh, look at that. So that's that's the kind of haze we had. And you can see some distant cumulus and nimbus clouds there. Uh, the sun actually wound up going behind those distant cumulonimbus clouds eventually. Uh, there you go. So, uh, yeah, it quite a, just a, a, a brutal, brutal uh, yeah, day today uh, with the air and the, just the just air just so thick you could just cut it with a knife uh, kind of air. So let's go look at the current conditions we have across the area. And I guess before I get started right off the bat, Sophia Thunderstorm Watch still in effect. Um, as far as storms go, uh, we're going to look at that in a moment. We also are, have a tropical storm watch now in effect and tropical storm warnings uh, for Elsa, the remnants of Elsa, uh, because Elsa's uh, because it's going to get it's going to get it's going to start moving up the coast really quick. Um, uh, so uh, this is uh, the concern that we have, and we'll go, go for a briefing for that uh, as well. Uh, let's first start with the radar, I guess. Um, well, I'll just use this radar already. Uh, so you get an idea of what's going on. Uh, we have a we had a couple of severe storms out off the forks, but generally you can see it's mostly up in Connecticut. Uh, we still under the severe thunderstorm watch, but it's looking less likely that we're going to see any severe thunderstorms tonight. Uh, well, looking at the current conditions outside right now, uh, it's it's just extremely muggy. So right now it's not that hot. Temperatures are dropping to the low 80s and upper and maybe even mid 70s on the south shore. But look at these dew points; they're just well up into the 70s it's extremely humid out there uh very uncomfortable uh day uh across the area and it was hotter than yesterday too on top of it and if you look at jersey it's still hotter there right now and there are a lot of people without power still in jersey that we have to talk about that too 88 yeah still hot there uh so uh let's go look at what the high temperatures were today Uh, and you will see, mostly everybody got to 90 degrees here. Uh, 95, that's Bell Rose. Uh, 93 in Carl Place. Uh, even on the South Shore, 90 in Wontaw. Uh Let's take a look and see what Farmingdale got up to. 91. Uh, Shirley only got up to 88, uh, but I think Islip got made it to 90, so they made it to 90 as well. Uh, even West Hampton made it up to 88. So just a very weak sea breeze today, very humid. Yeah, and the ocean temperatures aren't all that cool anymore. So that's that also is going to impact the effectiveness of the sea breeze. 95 was the high at LaGuardia. 90 at JFK. So yeah, you can see less of a sea breeze than yesterday. 90 at Central Park. And of course, still hotter in Jersey. We're in mid-90s with a roll there. Uh, and you can see uh, temperatures got pretty hot there uh, in, uh, in Tom's River. 94 downtown Tom's River. West Desert got to 97. Oh, Miller Air Park's back. Okay, so... Miller Air Park made it to 97, 96 at Lakehurst. So much hotter there uh, than here, even though we had all the, yes, we have all that other stuff going on that we have to talk about too. So uh, just a brutal day, and now we got to watch the storm. It's like just, it's, it feels like we're just getting, we're in, a, we're in a boxing match with Mother Nature. Mother Nature, it's like we're not getting a break. She just keeps throwing the punches and hitting us every time uh, with something going on, you know. Um, and it's, it's just been, uh, just to give you an example of how brutal the humidity was today, uh, 79, so the dew point is 70, and it's Farmingdale right now. You can see dew points were in the low. It, it coupled the temperatures with the humidity, and it felt uh, even hotter than it was. It felt like it was close to 100 degrees at times today uh, with that heat index. Um, and like I said, I slept no relief there either. The humidity also very high, uh, and uh, dew points again in the well into the 70s there, just really brutal. Uh, conditions and JFK as well. It's good to see Miller Air Park finally back online. We'll see how long uh, it will be online for. But you can see again these dew points. Uh, JFK getting some dew points as high as 75. 
Uh, so that is, yeah, that's really oppressive humidity right there. Uh, and you couple that with these temperatures and hardly a sea breeze at all. Uh, this is what you're dealing with. So uh, and now Miller Parks Air Park says N.A. All right, so we had a couple of observations from Miller Air Park, and that was it. Uh, but 96, uh, it did get up to 96, uh, dew point 72 uh, at, uh, in the afternoon, and that is quite brutal. And, uh, again, this is just one observation here taken. Uh, it could have gotten even hotter than that. So just a brutal day in Jersey, still worse than here, as bad as it was here. Um, still worse there uh, than here. Um, let's go take a look at uh, the uh, Wonder Map site, and we'll uh, take a look at see. Take a look at some stations today, and like I said, no real relief anywhere. Uh, uh, and it's really hot in Mineola. It's Mineola. You notice there's no station in the central part of Mineola. Uh, I'm telling you, Mineola is just so hot, uh, even hotter than Hicksville. I'm curious, what is it in Hicksville? 81 there too? I don't know. It felt hotter in Mineola. Uh, all right, so Carl Play still at 81, so it's really warm, muggy night. No relief here for us in the middle of the island. Uh, 80 degrees with a dew point of 73. Uh, and you'll see here again, uh, temperatures were in the 90s for much of the day, below 90s, and we didn't really drop below into the 80s until like 5 o'clock. Just really a brutal, uh, brutally hot day uh, across the area. Um, and again, even if you were on the south shore, uh, let's go to uh, let's go to uh, Massapequa Park, shall we? Yeah, well, yeah, this one right here. Let's see what they got up to. See if it was any better for them. It is better right now, though. It's 70. It's cooler there right now. 75.8. Uh, yeah, it was better for them. Yeah, 85, 86. So it was still a little cooler on the South Shore. But you got to be right on the water. This is South America Road. If you go North America Road, probably not as cool. Probably, I bet. Um, so, uh, and you can see though, it is a little cooler down there right now. Temperatures are currently in the low to mid 70s. Um, not quite as cool as you head west, but. Uh, yeah, it was quite quite a brutal day today. Let's go look at North Patchogue because uh, no relief this time. It was almost as hot as I was today uh, because, again, that lack of a, you know, that westerly component to the breeze. There was a south-southwest wind at times, but the main airflow was coming in off the Jersey. And you see, you look at the wind arrow there, west-southwest. So that westerly flow is what will get you. That will kill you right off New Jersey. Didn't quite make it to 90, 89.4, but it was almost as hot as here. Uh, over there, so almost as hot as here. Um, no, no real relief. And of course, if you're on the North Shore, it was even worse. You know that. Uh, you know, even hotter. Uh, if you were in somewhere in the, like Port Washington, for instance, let's do Port Washington again. It's still 85 in Port Washington, by the way. So it could be worse. Wow, it really, it's, it gets very, very hot there. Uh, very hot. I, I know. 94 degrees was their high. Uh, and you can see temperatures got into the 90s and stayed there for much of the day. No relief. And look at these high dew points, too. So really just oppressive. The only place that's going to be worse than that is the West Desert, uh, which is uh, west of Tom's River, where uh, it was really, really hot there. It's only, a, yeah, it's almost as hot as Port. Well, look at that dew point. 83 with a dew point of 76. That is unbelievable. Just oppressive. Just a stifling day. A stifling day. It's a good way of putting it. 83.3, 2.75.7. 3, and what did they get up to today? 96.6. So, yeah, pretty hot. And, again, they were in the 90s uh, right through till uh, the evening. They didn't drop below 90 until after 7 o'clock. So, really just unbelievably brutal there in Tom's River. Uh, unbelievably brutal conditions. And, uh... And then we've got to deal with the damage uh, from uh, the storms. And uh, J.C. Pinnell having a lot of problems uh, with uh, the power outage situation. We're going to go to J.C. Pinnell and look at their outage map, actually. Outage map. And uh, see how many. They still have a lot of people without power right now. Well, they've made a lot of progress. 9,000. They're down to 9,000. But you can still see there's a number of people without power. There's a lot of damage in this area. Uh, in Ocean County, particularly Tom's River, uh, from Tom's River on north, uh, there was a lot of damage. Uh, and they actually put up some of their damage uh, pictures on Twitter uh, of the damage here. Um, and so um, let's uh, take a look. Here we go. Here are Here is uh, some of the pictures here. 
So this was what they posted last night. Uh, and then this is what we have here. So this is some of the damage. I don't know where this is, if this is in Ocean County or uh, um, you can see some down trees uh, over there. So down trees on wires. They have more pictures here. More down trees. There's a pole. That uh, looks like a sub-transmission line on the top there. Uh, probably 34.5 kilovolts. There's a pole that went down. Not sure if these are in Ocean County. It doesn't say where they are, but uh, this is an example of some of the damage they were dealing with, obviously. And, of course, a lot of people not happy uh, because of it. Again, they, they really do need a, need a robu more robust system because if you look at PSEG uh, area, which had uh, the same storms. Let's go to PSEG, PSE and G outage map. Uh, uh, you will see that they have probably much fewer people only 1600 people without power so uh they they were they they've they've done a lot you know you know they've they, they again they're a better company and then that's our electric company's psg long island i am look at psg because so, we had some little damage here on long island too i think we may have still have some some very scattered power there's 153 right now uh the, we didn't get nearly as hardly impacted as new jersey but still they got impacted pretty bad uh and uh News 12 New Jersey actually did a pretty good job covering this, uh, talking about Tropical Storm Elsa. They have thousands remain without. News 12 Long Island didn't even they didn't even cover the storm. They didn't even cover the storm. Uh, so they don't have a video here, but you can still see here Wall Township without power. Lightning took out the top of this telephone pole right here. Um, so News 12 uh, New Jersey uh, really uh, again they just because again in New Jersey. Everybody matters. It's not just a certain demographic. You know that. Uh, so here's some more pictures. Here's some, here's some flooding in Eatontown here. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. This was from last night. Look at these lightning strikes. Incredible. Lightning from Point Pleasant Beach. There's a video uh, that, that was put up here. And listen to this. It was just an incredible storm last night over there. Incredible. Uh, and here you go. Here's a picture of what happened to this telephone. Lightning struck it. So uh, there's a lightning strike right on that pole right there. So uh, just crazy, uh, crazy stuff. And again, they, they don't, you know, they, News 12 New Jersey really does a good job. It's like you wouldn't even know it's the same station. Uh, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, meanwhile, you compare it from... Uh, from and he hit, oh, Jim watch so he does, they have a video actually of it or, and uh, this is from Facebook so they actually put it up on Facebook but you go to News 12 Long Island and they don't they don't talk about this stuff at all you know it's it's you know you go to News 12 Long Island and and it's uh, they're talking about Elsa and also gearing a certain demographic again so uh, and they're all over the South Shore today uh, you know they, they have the storm they have the storm vehicle all over this they haven't even bothered covering. Uh, it's just so obvious what the again. It's just all about it's. It's it, it's just amazing the difference between the two stations. How, how you know it's New Jersey is like regular people. Long Island's just all geared to these preppy little white finance professionals, mainly on the South Shore. It's just you know it's ridiculous. Um, I know this is a weather update, but uh, it's just uh, you know it does have to do with it because of the coverage. You know. Uh, and you can see uh, the patch had sc several outages scattered. So, uh, I mean, it did get hit hard. It was a bad storm. Uh, here's another. Uh, here's uh, what it looked like last night. Wires down, sparking right there. So, uh, this is uh, the kind of thing. And uh, and uh, this is uh, a National Weather Service. Holly also put something about this as these storms on radar again. So, it was a really quite an event last night in Jersey. Uh, that's an uh, unbelievable event. Uh, the fortunate thing for us is it moved through and it was done for them. It just hung around for hours, and that's, that just piles up, piles up the damage quite a bit. And speaking of damage, let's go and look at the storm reports now from last night, and uh, we'll take a look at these, uh, and we'll show you um, what happened last night uh, because uh, it was quite an event. Uh, that uh, lots and lots of damage here. We got a whole list of storm reports to go through. Uh, thunderstorm wind damage in Pennsylvania and Monroe. Well, Pennsylvania was affected by this too, by the way. Hail of an inch was reported in Montgomery, Pennsylvania. Thunderstorm wind damage in Sussex, trees down. Um, hail reported at uh, at Montgomery, Pennsylvania. 
I'm not going to really go over Pennsylvania too much. It's kind of out of the area. But New Jersey with thunderstorm wind damage in Sussex. High point wind gusts of 48 miles an hour. Uh, One-inch hail in Sussex, New Jersey as well. Tree board down, transformer and wires in Chester, Pennsylvania. Um, Thunderstorm wind damage in Sussex. Seems like most of these reports are from Sussex. Plow poles down. Sussex, thunderstorm wind damage. Trees on power lines. Uh, Trees and wires down in Jefferson Township in Morris County, New Jersey. Uh, Hail of an inch in Pennsylvania again. Uh, More thunderstorm wind damage in Sussex. So Sussex really, Sussex County and Highland Lakes really, Highland Lakes, uh, I know I'm reading the county here. Uh, Hardy's 10 Township, all these areas here in Sussex County really got hit hard. Uh, But Ocean County did too, so I'm looking for some. uh, And Rockaway and Morris County, Morris Town, multiple trees down. Um... Compton Plains in Morris County, large tree branch down, brought down power lines. Boonton in Morris, tree down on I-287. Um, uh, in Somerset County in Basking Ridge, uh, trees uprooted or snapped, roof blown off, thunderstorm wind damage. Um, New Jersey, Somerset County again, Basking Ridge, more thunderstorm, uh, multiple reports of trees down. Somerset County, damage to seven pine trees, report via social media in Raritan. Um, probably not pitch pines, probably white pines. Raritan, I don't think they have any pine barrens over there. Uh, Parlin, Ca- uh, Parlin in, in Middlesex County, New Jersey, heavy rain uh, of one inch in the past 30 minutes. So one inch of rain in 30 minutes. Thunderstorm wind damage in Red Bank in Monmouth County, large trees down, large tree down, fence Destroyed, time estimated by radar. 61 mile an hour wind gust in Manasquan, which is in Monmouth County. Uh, 61 mile an hour wind gust. Yeah, that's already, that's another site that had a 61 mile an hour wind gust. Uh, in Burlington County in Mount Laurel, tree, tree limbs broken and are power po- and power poles down. Um, in Middlesex County, they got a uh, hail of 0.88 inch in Edison. Hail was also reported in Parland with half an inch. Uh, Sayreville also at hail at 0. .70 inch. That that doesn't surprise me because when we saw that purple on the radar, that would indicate hail. Uh, a lot of reports Parland, Sayreville, hail being reported there. In Hopewell, Mercer County, thunderstorm wind damage of trees snapped and uprooted in Hopewell Township. Pennington uh, in Mercer County, uh, reports of hail of an inch. Uh, Flemington, which is in Hunterdon County, hail of 1.87, no, 1.78 inches of rain in three hours being reported. Um, in northeast Philadelphia, trees sliced in half. So Philadelphia was affected by the storm, too. Thunderstorm wind damage in Tacony. Trees uprooted or snapped, roof blown off. Oh, boy. Uh, so, yeah, Philadelphia also getting some wind gusts, too, 53 miles an hour. In northeast Philadelphia, Ocean County, Lakehurst had a 52-mile-an-hour wind gust. In Matawan and Monmouth County, 3.75 inches of rain, 47-mile-an-hour wind gust at Forkhead River, and a 39-mile-an-hour wind gust at Monmouth Beach. So, uh, yeah, just an example of what is, and and we're not even done yet because i got to go to the public information statement as well. They might also have, no, they don't. Okay, I was hoping maybe they'd put a list of all the rainfall reports in. but we'll have to actually go back to the weather and hazards map because I actually want to look at that. Uh, and we'll have to look at that, actually. So I'm going to have to go back to the weather and hazards map. Uh, we're going to have to look at that. A lot to talk about. I haven't gotten Elsa even yet. <laughs> uh, let's go to the observations. I go to historical precipitation. And I'll have to roll this back a day or two. All right, so we're going to have to roll this back to the 6th. I'm going to have to roll this back to around, uh, roll it back to 1 p.m., I guess, so we can get some of these rainfall amounts here. And you can see uh, some of these rainfall amounts here. It looks like Tom's River itself didn't actually get, well, they got 1.44 at Seaside, 1.42. It's when you go north of Tom's River that the numbers really start adding up. 2.23 in the north part of Tom's River. You have 2.23 in some areas of Jackson, 2.02 in Brick. Uh, So you can see this is where the higher amounts were. Uh, where these storms just kept training over the same area. And it gets even more over here uh, because you had that other storm that had this area really got nailed. Three, over three inches of rain in Hazlitt, as well as Homedale, 3.179 inches, uh, 3.17 inches of rain. Uh, so, yeah, quite a bit of rain in this area. 
Um, and Staten Island, too, you had 2.22 in Staten Island. Uh, in Carteret, 2.50. Uh, there's a 4.94. I don't know if I believe that. It could possibly be. Uh, this might be a little high, but 1.56 in Mountainside. You can see a lot of rain fell in these storms because, again, they move very slow. When you compare it to Long Island where we only got maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch because uh, the storms were moving pretty quickly and they didn't just hang around the area. So, yeah, I wanted to show you that. Uh, so now we go, we shift gears, and we talk about the tropical system now coming. Uh, and uh, we have a tropical storm watch in effect uh, for our area. Tropical storm watch is in effect uh, for our area. And uh, I don't know if they've got a briefing on it yet or if they've prepared a briefing yet. Upton, I know that they had a briefing at the, uh, on the uh, Philadelphia one, but no. They're talking to basically bring up severe thunderstorm warnings that are for Connecticut. Did I just see lightning? Hold on. I don't know. I've just seen lightning. Let me just put lightning maps on. So I saw something flash. I don't see anything here. No. These storms are just way upstate. Uh, here, here they, I mean, they're way up in Connecticut. Not even coming close. I, I don't think they're going to make it here. I really don't. Maybe if you look closely, you see some heat lightning. I don't know. But other than that, they're pretty far away. Uh, you know, whatever. There was a briefing at... Uh, for um, it was a weather briefing. At least they prepared uh, a briefing on the tropical storm Elsa Mount Holly did. Uh, but uh, this just gives you an example of uh, of the threats. And and this is the track. Um, there's the, the some maps here and the time of arrival. Um, uh, so this is uh, what we have. So let's go to the ladies from the Hurricane Center. Uh, We'll uh, go right there, and we'll look at the latest. So Elsa right now, inland. It has come inland, and it hasn't really... I don't think it caused too much damage, actually. I'm going to go look at the weather and hazards map here in a moment. I don't think it caused too much damage. All right, there it is. caused some power outages in Florida. Once it moved inland, it caused some scattered power outages. But from what I heard well, on the news, at least, it didn't seem too bad. Now, when you compare that to uh, all the people in power, without power in New Jersey, uh, still, you have a lot of people in Sussex County still without power. Um, in Pennsylvania, too, a lot of people without power. And they're still getting new storms over there. Look at Sullivan County. They're mostly out of power. Uh, so, yeah, they're getting, still getting some bad storms in Pennsylvania. Michigan, too. Uh, we have 138,040. I guess they had some bad storms there, too. Some of these county being, uh, counties being affected, too, as well. Uh, but, again, we go to Tropical Storm Elsa right now. So uh, let's go and look at the latest Public advisory. Elsa is over southern Georgia, producing gusty winds along the Atlantic coast and very heavy rain. As of 8 p.m., its location, 31.4 north, 82.7 west, about 75 miles west of Brunswick, Georgia. Maximum stain winds, 45 miles an hour. Moving north-northeast at 14 miles an hour. Minimum central pressure, 1,006 millibars, or 29.71 inches. Uh, so here is the... So we're going to go to the map, and it'll show us where the tropical storm watches and warnings are. Uh, and... Um, the winds extend out, outward up to 100 miles, generally southeast of the center. All right, but there was a wind gust at, uh, at Jekyll Island of 44 miles an hour in Georgia. Uh, actually, no, there was a stain wind uh, uh, at Jekyll Island, Georgia, of 44 miles an hour with a gust of 58. Uh, so uh, this is still something that we're going to have to watch. It is now inland. It's in a weakened state, but it is still a threat. Uh, and uh, this is what uh, right now what they have, and they have it going right over our area now, pretty much. It's going to ride right along the stalled front. Stalled front syndrome gets us once again, uh, and they actually keep this thing a storm. Uh, maybe they have it the depression for a little bit over Carolina, but then they have it becoming a storm again. So the yellow is a tropical storm watch, uh, and these are going to probably be upgraded to warnings. There's already a tropical storm warning in effect for South Carolina and Georgia. Uh, and this thing is going to race through our area tomorrow, all right, tomorrow morning. Uh, not tomorrow, I'm sorry, Friday morning. Uh, it will uh, race through our area. So we only have a short time to prepare for this thing. Um, and I said that we had to really be careful of it. And um, we're going to go look at some of the models now, and we'll show you what I mean uh, and how all this all sets up and everything. Well, first, let's look at it on the satellite here. This is what it looks like on the satellite. Pretty disorganized, but you can still see. Look at that convection blowing up there. Southeast of the center over the water. You still have plenty of warm water for this thing to work with. Um, and that is going to be a problem. Uh, well, let me uh, go to the radar here. 
so we can look at this uh, ra uh, radar here. Obviously, we have all these storms of state that are probably not going to affect us at this point. That top, that hurt, that trop, that severe thunderstorm watch still goes into effect until I mean, I'm numerous. We're watching numerous things here. All right, this is what else looks like on the satellite. Still pretty good. I'm, I'm on the radar. Still very good presentation. Just a lot of stuff going on. It's too much to track. Um, and so let's go back to the uh, tropical tidbit site. So I guess I got out of. All right. Now we'll go to the models and show you why what's happening. You can see the ridge from hell right there, the Atlantic Ridge. So this thing is not going to let this thing completely go out to sea with the Atlantic Ridge there, right? This is the GFS at the surface, all right? Let's go to the uh, 250 wind, all right? So you can see there isn't really much of a jet stream here. Um, but it's going to respond to a little trough. It's going to respond to this w a little weakness right here. Uh, if we look at the upper air here. You see that weakness, all right? And it's going to respond to that weakness and follow that weakness, all right? So it's going to go up the coast because of that weakness that we have there. You can see that little troughiness there, all right? That's what it's going to follow, all right? So uh, let's... No, I don't want that. We, <laughs> I don't want that. Uh, let's go back to this. All right. Let's go to the surface now, all right? Uh, so this is uh, Elsa right now over uh, Caroline. You know, watch, watch, watch what's going to happen here. So it's being blocked by the high. It's not going to go out to sea. It's just going to ride along the I-95 uh, and uh, and go literally right along the I-95. And the center of it might wind up going over the center of Suffolk County. Uh, and it's going to bring some heavy rain, some strong winds for Friday. Um, it does stay over land. Uh, but as we learned with Isaias, you can never underestimate these things. Part of the storm is near enough to the ocean. It could dra grab some strength. And especially if the center emerges over the ocean off the coast of New Jersey, it may have enough time to strengthen just a little bit uh, before it wound up uh, going over Long Island. And so, yeah, it just goes right up the coast. And again, you got the stall front syndrome right here. Uh, again, with stall front syndrome, very bad. Normally, if this we had a normal cold front, it would come and it would sweep this thing out to sea. But that's not what's happening because we don't have any cold fronts to help us out. We just have this huge ridge here. Uh, and the stall front right here, and that, and that stall front is like railroad tracks for this uh, tropical storm just to ride right along. Um, if we look at the wind on here, um, you will see here, winds, don't, winds aren't necessarily becoming a problem until this thing gets closer to Long Island. However, it, just, it seems like the worst winds are the east of the center, so maybe we won't be seeing too much of wind from it, but we've got to look at some of the other models uh, and uh, before we make that decision, so let me uh, move this to the eastern U.S. look here. So we're going to look at another model here, which is the um, NAM. All right, so we're going to look at the, this on the NAM here with the wind here. You can see the center stays out, but it's at the track. NAM's a little further east with the track. Good news is it keeps the worst of the wind offshore, but this still could cause some fl coastal flooding. Uh, and that's what obviously News 12 is, because <laughs> again, it affects their favorite people on the South Shore. So, of course, they're going to be all over that. Um, and the other thing, of course, would be rain as well, uh, that this thing could bring a decent amount of rain as it rides up the coast there. All right, if we look at the amount of rain that uh, the NAM is generating, for instance, uh, you would see here that uh, actually it doesn't look all that impressive. Uh, oddly enough, because it keeps most more of the moisture east to the center, which I'm not buying. I think the GFS is a little more accurate uh, when it comes to the way the rain is going to fall. Uh, this is the GFS rainfall accumulation map. Okay, so now let's get a little closer to our area, and we'll go ahead and we'll look at the HRRR model. From I don't think I have the 0Z, and no, I don't. So I have to look at the 18Z, and I'll shift this back to the precipitation mode here. As far as we get to the night here with these storms here, and they just seem to stay mostly north of the area because again, this front is the front uh, is is stalled out; it's not moving. All right, all right. And for tomorrow, I think we're mostly dry for tomorrow. Uh, maybe a slight chance of a shower, a thunderstorm. It, it, that chance increases as we get later on in the evening. Here is nine uh, around nine o'clock. Could be generating some thunderstorms over the city, and then uh, this is. The storm right here, uh, going right, literally right up, right across like the middle, right, right over Islip, it looks like, right over Suffolk County, all right? Uh, and uh, this is, again, very, uh, really, I'm glad that the H-Triple actually goes far enough out that it actually shows this, 
uh, so we can actually you now take a look and see how much uh, what the winds will be and our precipitation so let's uh, back this now down to here so tomorrow we shouldn't be feeling any effects yet uh, but as we get to early friday morning this is the h triple r and it has some pretty strong winds on the south shore here uh, beaches here strong southeasterly winds maybe sustained as much as 40 miles an hour so this could cause some coastal flooding for sure um with that type of track there especially east of the center so especially uh, suffolk county say from islip fire island out to the south fork west hampton beach that area is gonna have to be concerned about flooding and uh the, again this is the h triple r uh, and that's what it shows uh let's go look at the total accumulated precip and the HRRR has more of the rain falling west of the center and not as much on the Long Island, but we still gives us about an inch. But you can see HRRR seems to have the heaviest rain uh, falling a little more over. Um, again, the tendency is to have the rain on the west side of these storms. So the rain, uh, the heavier rain would be over um, northwestern Connecticut, the Hudson Valley, uh, New Jersey, uh, along the I-95 corridor, basically, and along a little less over Long Island. Of course, that is the H triple R. Uh, we have other miles to look at. Let's go to the NAM now. So this is the NAM, and a similar idea with the NAM here. I'm looking at the NAM three. So a similar idea with the NAM three here with the rainfall. Uh, let's look at the, this on the NAM three. So you can see it's generating those thunderstorms again tomorrow, a little earlier. And you can see it's mostly over New York City. Not so much over Nassau County. And then here comes uh, Elsa here, of the remains of Elsa. And you can see it really could be some pretty strong thunderstorms even with that overnight. But then it's out of here by Friday. It's out of here. So it's done. It's gone. It's, it's moving along at a good clip. And then we have a chance of some thunderstorms. With what looks like a cold front for Saturday, a Friday night, perhaps. Um, but uh, that is what it looks like on the NAM. Uh, now let's go and look at our temperatures. Oh. Go ahead and look at that, even though we're done with the heat right now. So let's go back to the HRRR 18Z. Let's look at the temperatures. And I'm only going to look at the, the temperatures with this model, all right? Uh, so tomorrow uh, will be cooler, obviously, because of the cloud cover. Uh, but if you're in Jersey, you could still get close to 90, Long Island 80s. Uh, and then for Friday, obviously cooler. Uh, with uh, the rain and uh, it'll be very humid though obviously with the rain and the humidity from elsa and it's going to get the dew points up there so the dew points aren't going down anytime soon so here is tomorrow we're still going to be dealing with the humidity dew points in the 70s low 70s and a refreshing for a strengthening southerly wind and then here comes elsa all right and you can see again south southeast winds here a uh, friday which riding right along that stall front because the front just never makes it through all right it never makes it through and if we look at the NAM, we can go a little further here uh, with this, uh, and you'll see that we do have that front come through and maybe bring some relief from the dew points, getting us down maybe into the 60s and maybe even 50s for the weekend here. We'll go with the GFS, too. But you see that front just doesn't make it that far offshore. It just, just gets hung up, stalls out, basically. Um, so let's go back to the... Uh, and we'll also look at the temperatures, too, as well. This is the temperatures for tomorrow, all right? And is that Friday? And weekend right now, it looks like we're going to be dealing with 80s. Uh, so, and you know, I'm not even going to get into the next week until we're done with Elsa, all right? So here we are uh, on Sunday, all right? So it looks like not a bad weekend. Uh, we can look at the skies. Probably be plenty of clouds around. I can't tell you what's going to happen with the smoke, uh, but maybe sunshine on Saturday, Sunday, more clouds. Um, and if we look at the uh, NAM 3, um, you can see we might actually see the sun come out on Friday, actually later on, maybe after the storm. Uh, maybe that'll clear some of the smoke out of here, at least. That would be nice, because uh, the smoke's been a huge problem. Yes, we're going to look at the satellite, too. I know, there's many, many things to talk about here. All right, let's go to the satellite now. And you can see those storms popping. Let me roll this back 48 frames here, so you can see, look at that smoke. So lots and lots of smoke over our area. So we're still dealing with this disgusting smoke uh, over us. And I, I honestly, I don't know when we're going to get rid of it. Um, 
we can look at the modus satellite as well so i'm tracking numerous i mean we're tracking the heat we're tracking severe weather we're tracking smoke from wildfires we're tracking elsa uh you know all these things going on and it looks like these fires are still going strong up there in canada so uh, uh if you're hoping to get rid of this smoke uh you're better off actually with the tropical air because uh, the air up north at least you got look at all this smoke these fires are still going up here so uh, lots of smoke uh, still, on, and we have fires here too in British Columbia. Look at all these fires going. So it's just uh, this chaos, man. And I haven't even shown you Siberia yet. You don't even want to look at that, uh, but I will. Look at all the smoke there. They got lots of fires. And again, it's just because it's been so hot. It's been dry. They haven't really had any rain at all. Uh, and uh, it's just, you know, let's go to the uh, windy.com site. And we'll go ahead and we'll look at Elsa now. This uses the European model, by the way. I'll put wind gusts in here so you get an idea of what this thing is going to do. All right. So going 10. Here it is. And it's still holding its own. Uh, even while it's inland, uh, wind gusts can still be as high as 61 miles an hour. Uh, and here is Thursday. Friday. Let's go into Friday here. As it gets close to the hour area. But you can see the winds are really going to start picking up. Uh, these are the wind gusts, 37 miles an hour. I could put it back to the regular wind speeds. Uh, but still, I mean, you're going to have sustained wind southeast at 16. Uh, but look at what's going on right offshore here. Uh, south at 52 miles an hour. Uh, this is right offshore, and, and, and some of this could wind up getting into bricked, too. I mean, these are sustained winds, all right? These are sustained. We're looking at the sustained winds for Friday, all right? Here's 10 a.m. So you can see Nassau County doesn't really get, get the wind too bad. Um, this is uh, northwest at 17 miles an hour. But if you're in Suffolk County, east of the center, uh, you're going to be dealing with anywhere from like the east of like, I would say the Sagatos, maybe east of Nichols Road. You're going to be dealing with southeast winds sustained uh, at 42 miles an hour. Now, this is the European model. Uh, and you can see that it tracks in. So this thing is still close enough to the ocean to generate these really strong winds. All right. And this is going to be a big problem for the South Shore. Uh, so let me, move this, let me get this back into uh, position for Friday morning here. Um, right over here. And Delmarva, too, is going to get into this, too, as well. Uh, we're going to put this over to gusts now. Uh, because uh, this is, again, quite impressive here. So this is, again, European, obviously, being uh, a more amplified. Uh, but uh, this is what you're dealing with here. This would be 8 a.m. Friday. Uh, and uh, if you're in Jersey, uh, you're going to be dealing with Jersey Shore. You're going to have wind gusts up to 57 miles an hour. Uh, and again, with that east, it looks like northern parts of the Jersey Shore, north of Tom's River, could be dealing with a lot of flooding. 67 mile an hour wind gusts. We have to look at the uh, coastal uh, 60. So could be gusts close to hurricane force, perhaps. This could be a, a similar, uh, except for the path, uh, the winds could reach similar levels to what happened with Isaias. Uh, and you all remember that quite well. Uh, so here is the, uh, and again, if you're in Nassau County, according to this, uh, we could still see wind gusts up to 48 miles an hour Friday morning. Uh, and then uh, out east in Suffolk County, your winds could be gusting close to hurricane force. Uh, uh, so this is going to be a significant wind event here. Uh, this is, again, the European model, obviously being a little more amplified uh, than some of the other models. We're going to look at the GFS as well. And some of the other models on this as well. So 78. So this is really very concerning. Very concerning uh, to see. Uh, it really just holding on to the strength. Uh, you would think it would weaken. Um, let's now go to the waves. Because that's the other thing that's going to start picking up. And you can clearly see here is, here is this uh, storm here. And as it moves in, you're going to see out over the open ocean. Waves close to 20 feet. Uh, at the beaches, you're going to have waves probably 11 feet. And there's going to be a lot of beach erosion. Coastal flooding. Uh, south Shore, particularly east of, uh, I would say, Robin Moses State Park, uh, you could have significant, I mean, wave heights close to 20 feet, according to this. Uh, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad news. Uh, this is, again, the European model here that we're looking at. And, again, these wave heights are incredible. Uh, so uh, this, this is going to be very bad. Uh, very, this is gonna, this is, this is gonna be bad. It's gonna be worse than I, I think a lot of people are expecting, and uh, worse than the media leads you to believe. Um, uh, because the wind, I mean, this is fixated on the south shore, but I think the wind is gonna cause a lot of power outages. That's my concern. But of course, News 12 is fixated on the south shore, of course, 
Um, and we saw all the power outages that happened with Isaias. Um, and I think these impacts are going to be a little more east of the uh, of what Isaias did because of the track. All right. So let's go back to the wind now, uh, and we're going to shift this over to the GFS model, which isn't quite as scary, thank God. Uh, hopefully not. We're going to look at it. <laughs> Let's go Friday morning, 5 a.m. So this is the GFS. We're looking at the sustained winds here Friday morning, 5 a.m. And you can see east at 16 miles an hour. It's nothing terrible. All right. Uh, 9 a.m. Uh, so the GFS not nearly as bad as the European as far as the winds go. The European is a lot worse with these winds uh, for whatever reason it is. And, um, you know, maybe it's picking up on something and it's not. Uh, but it's hard when you don't have when you don't have consistency let's just go to wind gusts here all right these are the wind gusts and you can see uh gfs actually a little further west uh so it puts us into those southeast winds of most of long island including nassau county gusting up to 32 miles an hour here's uh but it does it does seem to it just doesn't get any higher than 30 to 40 miles an hour and then it's out as far as the winds go all right so that's the gfs not nearly as scary uh, and obviously, I think the uh, European actually indicated this thing getting s European may be a little overdone on the strength. Um, but again, that is the you, you, you have to weigh all the different scenarios. Let's go to the NAM now because we have another model. Uh, the NAM is only going to take us out. It should take us out far enough that we should be able to look at the storm. So here we go. Wing gusts with the NAM. Oh, yeah. See, the NAM is more amplified again. So. Let's go to the winds, sustained winds with the NAM. And you can see here, Friday in the morning, we're already seeing sustained winds 31 miles an hour at the beaches, uh, if first starting in Jersey and then working its way uh, into uh, Friday morning for Long Island. And you can see sustained winds over Long Island, probably close to 20 miles an hour. And at the beaches, uh, you would have a 34 mile an hour wind gust. All right. Uh, tropical storm conditions, I, I really do foresee tropical storm warning being issued. And that's why they're going to issue one, because the conditions are going to be met for a tropical storm. But uh, let's move this over to wind gusts, all right? And the NAM, here are the wind gusts, and the NAM uh, has wind gusts uh, up. Let's see, it's not too bad for the, um, you have to go a little more inland. Uh, but out, out over the water, you're going to have wind gusts up to 51 miles an hour. And uh, 41 miles an hour, probably uh, in the, in the central Nassau County in Long Island. It doesn't. It's a very quick mover. That's the good news. So it's going to move through, and it's going to be done. 45 mile an hour wind gust uh, possible at uh, 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 Friday morning uh, out, mostly over Suffolk County. All right. So the models are just all over the place with this. You can see there are differences. The track is similar. Uh, but that track, literally, a, f a very small difference in the track is going to make a big difference in the impact uh, because the more uh, the west this thing goes, the more of an area that will be affected by the high winds. The more east this thing goes, less of an area will be affected by the high winds. We all see the rain, obviously. Uh, so um, we'll be tracking this. So I'll have another update for you tomorrow on uh, this uh, storm uh, as we watch what Elsa does. And, oh, yeah, just one more thing before I leave. Let's go to earthnoldschool.net. We're going to talk about, well, wait a minute. Why is this storm so strong? Why is it getting so much energy? Well, all you got to do is look at the ocean. Sea surface temperature anomaly. There you go. All that above normal water there that we have offshore right now. All right. That's what's, that's what's doing it. Right. For almost some of these are uh, some of these areas are up to f anywhere between two and five degrees Fahrenheit above normal. And that's why um, it's the it water is warm. You know, uh, we've got uh, in this spot here, we've got uh, water temperatures already off the south shore of Long Island near 70 degrees, which is above normal for early June, July. It's above normal. Should be in the upper 60s, mid to upper 60s. It shouldn't be this warm. Uh, and again, that is all fuel and energy for the storm. So. I'll wrap up the weather update now, and we'll keep you posted on Elsa. And uh, it's just, it's just, uh, just one. Uh, we just need some. I think after the Elsa, hopefully, we'll get a little bit of a break from nature before she uh, decides to beat us up once again. So you have a good night, and thanks for watching.